Hello everybody, I am Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, bringing you another incredible edition of Solo Sunday News. And you don't want to hear me just chatting on about what's going on with my morning, so let's talk about some wrestling news. And the first thing we need to talk about is not the fact that Clash of Champions is happening tonight, because it's madness that we have another pay-per-view out of nowhere, but I ain't going to complain because I love wrestling. We've got more wrestling coming up. But first thing I want to talk about is AEW. So obviously we had Miro making his big in-ring debut this week on Dynamite. And it didn't exactly go to plan. I think most casual fans and diehard fans definitely could tell that there were a few things that perhaps went wrong. Miro clearly tweaked his ankle when he fell through the ropes at some point. And then uh, Joey Janela took a few weird bumps and there were a few things that went wrong there. Kip Sabian got flicked over a barricade and like landed on his head on the cement. So there were a few things that probably didn't go the way they would have wanted them to, let's just say that. So now, according to Brian Alvarez of the Wrestling Observer Live, uh, the bout was apparently deemed a disaster backstage, so people obviously weren't very happy with that. And it just is what it is. Miro's been away for a while, he's been doing his Twitch, uh, he's not been consistently performing in the ring night after night, week after week. So it's there's going to be teething uh, problems, I guess, a little bit, but... <laughs> I wouldn't say he necessarily looked rusty by any means. I think he looked pretty good. I think the <laughs> mistakes happen in the ring. It just is what it is. I thought Miro looked great. I liked his MMA shorts and his kick pads. And I think this this new program of him being the best man, which is obviously a, a dig at all the wedding crap that he had to do in WWE, is going to work out for the best. This is just a small bump in the road. I have faith in you, my friend Miro. And speaking of former WWE employees, well, let's talk about Ryback because he has been doing a Twitter Q&A and he's causing a bit of no, a bit of a fuss. He's got a bit of attention on him because, yeah, he was talking to his fans. He was answering loads of questions about wrestling, about other things. And this one was to do with whether he, he still loves wrestling, if he's still, still got a nice place in his heart. And he said, he responded, he said, I love wrestling, I just don't care for WWE. Fans need to stop putting the brand above the performers. You've all been brainwashed to think Vince is some sort of genius. The guy is as corrupt as a lot of other greedy businesses profiting for bad and need to wake the F up. He didn't say F. Uh, a fan then responded by saying, yeah, Vince had a few good albums. Now his records don't sell and he has lost the pulse and insight of the world he once had. This seemed to trigger Ryback because he then responded with something that's a little bit unsettling. Um, I'm, I'm not going to lie, but I'll just say it. I'll just, I'll just read it off as, as he said it. And I quote, to quote Michael Cole, It was always the talent. He just created a platform as a human circus that he modified from his father. The guy is a piece of crap. Can't stress this enough. Uh, world will be a better place when he passes. This isn't wishing death, but stating an opinion I believe to be true. So... Wasn't wishing death, but said that the world would be a better place when Vince McMahon dies. Is what it is, I guess. Uh, his opinion is very clear. Uh, no surprise there that Ryback is not a fan of Vince McMahon and water is still wet. So yeah, there you go. Doesn't look like he'll be back inside a WWE ring anytime soon. But in more positive news, AJ Styles is going to be fighting Jeff Hardy and Sami Zayn at Clash of Champions for the Undisputed Intercontinental Championship in a ladder match which is going to be great. We love that. We're very excited about that. But AJ was on Talking Smack, the most recent edition, which I believe was Saturday morning. And he was talking about this, this match, which is coming up, this really highly anticipated bout. And he dropped a little bombshell, which if it's true, awesome. If it's not, my head hurts. So when speaking about his opponents, Jeff Hardy and Sami Zayn, he was like talking about how Jeff Hardy is terrifying in a ladder match. You don't want to mess with Jeff Hardy in a ladder match. You've got to be eyes on the prize there. He then mentioned that Sami Zayn probably hasn't been getting in the best sort of shape. He isn't really ready for the, this match. And he said, this is from Styles, he hasn't been doing anything. From what I hear, he's a brand new father. When your wife starts getting big, so do you. You eat right with her because you don't want to make her feel bad. So you just gobble it up right beside her. Whatever she wants to eat, we'll eat it together. Listen, Sammy has probably been rubbing her feet because when you're pregnant, he hasn't been doing nothing but rubbing feet and eating. So in case you missed that, I think AJ Styles just revealed that Sami Zayn has become a father. And I'm not sure Sami Zayn has mentioned anything about this on Twitter or any social media. From as far as I'm concerned, you can you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'd, I'd, I'd like to be wrong because I'd, I'd like Sami Zayn to reveal this more than anything. Uh, it's it's very sensitive to very sensitive information just to reveal on Talking Smack for the, for the for the hell of it. 
very strange. Um, if it's true, congratulations, Sami Zayn. Well, a nice I don't know why I'm clapping. Like, well done <laughs> for having a kid. Um, lovely news if it's true. If it's not true, uh, very strange because I don't get how this works into some form of storyline. Is he just trying to get Sami Zayn off his game? Trying to say he's got a dad bod? I, I don't know. I'm very confused. But obviously, there was speculation for a long time that Sami Zayn missed all this time off WWE uh, because of the current global situation, which he would have every right to do so. Now it looks like he did it because he became a daddy, which... Go Zayn, I think? But in more concrete news than whether Sami Zayn is or is not a father, WWE SmackDown's ratings stayed steady going into Clash of Champions. So we always talk about the ratings on this Sunday edition, whether they go up, whether they go down. This kind of did that, like that. It like, they stayed ish, but then like went down. I'm very confused, but yeah, they, they did. They did okay. Um, obviously last week I reported that they were just under the 2 million bracket, but then in the final ratings, they were just over it. It was, yeah, it was marginal, but now they've uh, they've managed to draw an average of 2.032 million. That was according to Showbuzz Daily. That was last night's episode, and that was a drop of only 0.2% from the previous week's show. And they also scored a 0.55 in the 18 to 49 demographic, which is, as we know, it's the most important one. And that was, once again, number one for the evening. So, yeah, this is well-earned. SmackDown's been great recently. For, for me, it's been the most consistent WWE show over, over the last month or two. Ever since Roman Reigns returned, who'd have thunk it? It's been watchable. It's been more than watchable. It's been super entertaining. I can't wait for that Universal title match, the, the Reigns Uso one. It's, it's going to be class. If anybody saw those promos that, that they ended SmackDown with this week, that's that's enough. To, that, that will get me on. Even if the pay per view is terrible, which I don't think it will be, that is enough to make me come back for another episode of SmackDown, which is what you should do. This is what you should be trying to do. Also, Alexa Bliss is great as the, the fiend demon possessed. Thing. It's yeah, I just love it. Everything about SmackDown right now, probably minus the tag division, which just needs some more bodies, is going great. Bailey's amazing. The IC title feuds amazing. Just just keep it up. Keep up the good work, SmackDown. But if I had to like rank the WWE shows right now, you got your SmackDown. I'd say NXT is pretty close, just purely because the in-ring action. Then Raw is somewhere way down in the ground somewhere else. Uh, but if we're going to talk about NXT, NXT have just announced another match for TakeOver 31, which is next week. That's right, we've got another pay-per-view next week. It's a big old TakeOver, and it's shaping up to be a pretty good TakeOver. But the match that has been announced is Kushida taking on Velveteen Dream. And if you saw last week's NXT, you saw that Velveteen Dream interrupted the gauntlet match, which Kushida was, uh, Kushida was part of, and cost him a chance, really, to take on Finn Balor at this TakeOver. And... It's always tough to talk about this, I guess, to a certain degree, because Velveteen Dream is obviously all these allegations outside of the ring right now, the same with the likes of Matt Riddle, a few other stars, and when you see them in the ring, it's very hard to separate that. Like, as a fan, it's, it's just really difficult to do. It puts fans in awful positions, because it's just like, well, I want to watch the good wrestling, but I can't shake what's going on in real life, and it's making me feel bleh, dirty watching it. So... It is what it is. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of this, uh, the, the match being announced, what you think of the whole situation. Uh, but I am just going to read off the takeover lineup just to let you know what's coming up on that on that show because it looks like a pretty good show. Uh, you've obviously got the Kushida Velveteen Dream match. You've got the return of a mystery wrestler that likes throwing pipes at glass cabinets with NXT titles in them, which for, I was very confused when I did the ups and downs for NXT, which you should go and check out. And I said it was maybe Tommaso Ciampa, which is a silly thing to say now, looking back. It could be Bobby Roode, it could be Charlotte Flair, it could be, what was the other one, Bo Dallas, somebody like that. Nah, we don't know. Let's see who that is. Uh, you've also got North American champion Damian Priest defending his belt in his first takeover defense against Johnny Gargano. And you've also got NXT Women's Champion Io Shirai. She's defending against Johnny's wife, Candice LeRae. Well, yeah, so that, that's, we could come out of this takeover with a husband and wife partnership of belts here it could be a dynasty going forward you never know i hope not because i like Io Shirai. and also then we've got finn balor nxt champion finn balor defending against kyle o'reilly and if you need any reason which you probably shouldn't just based on the other matches as well if you needed any reason to tune into this takeover that is your reason right there that this is going to be in my personal opinion, one of the matches of the year kyle o'reilly's finally getting his big old main event spot it's going to be great they're going to put on a clinic yeah, TakeOver 31's looking awesome. I'm definitely going to be there watching it, so you should too. 
And that has been your Sunday Solo Sunday News Roundup with me, Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Do not forget to like, share, and click on the subscribe button to all things What Culture Wrestling. And follow myself on Twitter at gmorgan04. Do not forget to follow everybody here at What Culture Wrestling at What Culture WWE. And the most important thing above all else is just to have the best Sunday ever. We've got Clash of Champions coming up tonight. It's going to be great. Be sure to follow the live reactions. We've got, uh, I think it's Phil Chambers and Adam Wilborn just doing some lovely live reaction stuff. They're probably trying to catch marshmallows in the mouth and the rest of it. It's a good time had by all. But right now, go and eat something. Go and chill out. It's a Sunday. Do your thing. And I will see you very, very soon.